I drilled both sides of the box with 11 30 seconds bit, which is the correct size for an eighth inch national pipe thread tap. We have, I have some fittings to go in here, so we're going to tap both sides for eighth inch pipe. And that just happens to be made for a 9 16 wrench. And I broke it off. I found it necessary to edit out portions of that last clip in order to maintain my PG rating with YouTube. I didn't go quite deep enough with the tap. If you're following my lead on this, you should go full thread depth on an 8th inch NPT tap. Then this will go in pretty much by hand and just snug it up. Don't get too carried away with it like I did with this last one and snapped it off. Now we got a fitting on both ends. I'm building this set of lights for the bandsaw. Again, using a pair of salvage magnets from a computer hard drive. This box is seven and a half inches long, two and a half inches wide. There's plenty of room for the LED driver or the transformer and a switch. And I made this longer because I wanted more separation between the two lights and this is an inch and a half high and the lid will go on top of that. You won't have seen this jig yet it will show up in a future video but I made a jig to hold some wood handles I need to drill a hole 11 30 seconds in here for an eighth inch pipe tap and hold it while I'm tapping it and it just accidentally happens that this jig will hold these using my new lights This is a pair of pliers for putting these lock line fittings together. Now if you're a knuckle dragging card carrying Neanderthal you probably won't need one of these. But all the rest of you will thank me for suggesting that you buy one. It makes life easier. I like easier. This flexible hose or flexible tubing is called lock line. It's usually used for coolant on lathes, mills, 
are for blowing compressed air on scroll saws to blow the sawdust away. It's very flexible. You can make it whatever length you want. And this is the real stuff. It'll say lock line right on it. And it, it'll hold a position. To me, it seems to be better than what you would find with some of the fake stuff. It's pretty easy to take apart. You just bend it. And it pops apart. Use these assembly pliers. One end says ball end up. That means that the ball end is out that way. The socket end is out the other way. Put it together and you snap it together. Those pliers make the job real easy. Now, when I get over here, I have two balls together. They won't go together. You usually have to have a socket to go on there. There's an adapter so that you can put two ball ends together. And then to put a light on the end of it, I haven't seen anybody do this before. I don't see any reason why it won't work. The flow path through this is certainly big enough to accommodate our wires especially small wires for these LEDs. Now I just need to solder the leads from the uh, bulb socket, put a piece of heat shrink on there and pull it back through there, make my connection to the transformer on this side. Actually, if you staggered these two splices so they were not side by side, they would pull through there a little easier. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap this with black electrical tape. I'm going to put a piece through here and then wrap this so that these don't pull apart too easily because they are, they are, they're not a tight connection. And I don't want those to come apart inside the light. I take a piece of this tape and I cut it in half. And I have two strings of that going across here. And then I've wrapped it with the tape. And that's together. That's not coming apart now. now I'm not going to pull that all the way through yet because I want to put a little adhesive on the back side of this bulb to hold it in position. I staggered these. And they pull right in there. So staggering those does make it easier to get through that lock line. Fold all the wires in there neatly and we'll put the lid on. This lock line stuff is a bit on the expensive side. Sometimes it's downright exorbitantly expensive. But if you watch eBay, bide your time until you find something that's reasonably priced, you can put this together without spending a ton of money. But it won't be cheap. The magnets are holding the box to the rear of the upper portion of the bandsaw, and the flexible tubes come out to either side. The switch is located right here, and it's accessible from the front side of the bandsaw. All of this is out of the way if you're adjusting this up and down and it's higher than what the maximum possible cut is for the bandsaw. I have quite a few of these reflective lights, work lights, they're handy. This one has a 60 watt bulb in it. It's an incandescent bulb. It's the wrong color for when I'm shooting a video when I have daylight bulbs and everything else in the shop. Mixed mode lighting tends to confuse the camera sometimes. There's reflection coming back off of the bandsaw. 
If this is running for any length of time, this gets hot. Usually it's in the wrong position. If I mount it down here, a lot of times it's in the way. I can bump into it with my arm. These do get hot. And it creates shadows and stuff. The light is not exactly on the blade. I can adjust these up and down, closer, further away, however I want. The lighting in here is good. If I'm working on a pattern, there are no shadows at the teeth of the blade. If I'm cutting on one side, I do get a little shadow from this one, but it's past the cutting teeth. Same way on this side. I was concerned that these things would shake around while the uh, saw was running. That hasn't been a problem. This saw, which is a grizzly, it does shudder a little bit on startup and on shutdown, but while it's running, it's been pretty good. <laughs> does experience a little vibration as it winds down, but while it's running, it's always been pretty good. This is adjusted to where it's quite firm on the concrete. The only place that this can move is just the sheet metal of the construction that allows it to wiggle around. And the switch is right under here, easy access, little micro switch, on and off. Why did I use micro switches? I had them, I might as well use them. That little switch is rated for 5 amps. One of these days I may have to build one of Matthias's bandsaws. This one, no more than what I use a bandsaw, this has worked pretty well. I don't have one of those Canadian coins to give a vibration test, but I do have this wood hoop. You see that does dance around a little bit on startup. dancing around pretty good now. But that wood hoop stayed up 